I was 98% automated, you know, number one top gross earner year over year over year, making easily six figures sitting on my hands. Here's my system. Take it. Run with it. I give people a lot. I, I don't under, I don't understand it. What's up, guys? Hey, we just finished up a workshop. It was about an hour long. We talked about strategic selling and how to get uh, new agency clients for your SaaS agency on uh, autopilot. And in that discussion, sometimes they tend to meander around, but there was one really cool concept that we spent about 20 minutes uncovering and deep diving and then going over the tactical approach about how to implement something called slow onboarding. Why slow onboarding? That's what this t entire 20 minute segment is all about. But the point of doing it is to make it so your client and customer retention is crazy. I mean, it's way longer than it was before. And it makes a lot of sense when you see it. And in this video, again, we go through step by step on how to implement it and what it can mean to your agency. So check out the training and I would love to hear in the comments below your thoughts and your results. Hopefully. Everybody gets slow onboarded. You guys know what slow onboarding is? No, I'm fascinated by this though, because most of our clients want, they want to be up and running as quickly as possible. And that's a, a big thing that we push, which is, hey, you can get leads within the next couple hours if you want to do this right now. Yeah. Yeah. So we were doing that. We, I always thought that was the thing. I always thought that you're supposed to onboard somebody as, as quickly as possible. And so for like a really long time, that's what we did. And we could do the whole thing in a 45 minute call, get them like we could do it all then. But then I was talking with this guy and I'm not going to out him because he has like the craziest, like the guy never loses customers, never. And he's an Upex user, never loses customers, has this super weird niche that the, they, that the way everything he does makes no sense to me. And he's like, I said, how do you, like, I don't understand how you do this. He goes, because we slow on board. I said, I don't know what that means. Every, he goes, all you smart agency people will bring people on and you'll onboard them really fast. Whoop, look at all this cool stuff you got. He goes, they don't know what the hell they got. You gave them so many things. I'm going to giving you ads. I'm giving you follow-up. I'm giving you reviews. I'm giving you, you, you give them all that stuff. They don't know what the hell they got. He goes, I just do like, I have like, I want to, so I do four. I want to say he did. I think he did four too, but I can't remember. And so I'm like, I immediately saw, I'm like, Oh, that's what we're doing. I know that's what we're doing. So I'll go back to my team, break it up. Stop the engine. You know, I'm like, stop doing this. This is, this is the exact opposite of what we need to do. And it makes complete sense. And so we just have like, we have like a goal of that first onboarding. We have a goal of that second onboarding. And even though our users come on and they're like, you know, they've got that buying enthusiasm they just bought, they feel like, oh, uh, I just found the Holy Grail and my life has changed. Well, you gotta, you, I've heard the phrase and to an extent, I kind of agree with it. Sell them what they want, give them what they need. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that you're, you know, it's not a bait and switch, but it's like, Hey, this is the solution, but we got to like, make sure that it's kind of like, if you've been starving for whatever, however many days, you don't just go and eat all the meal, you'll die. Right. Hey, let's give you just a little bit, get you healthy, a little bit more, make you healthy. Then you can eat full meals. Right. And so we started doing this uh, several months ago and this was, one of the cool things with Upex is I get to talk to like Forrest and be like, Hey, Forrest, what are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. I'll be like, Oh yeah, I got that. I got that. Ooh, I didn't know that before. Whoop. I'll take that. Thank you Forrest. And I'll and talk to you guys and just see what's going on. And that to me was like, I heard that. I'm like, um, that's exact. I'm, I'm doing that. And ever since we've done that, uh, our retention has probably doubled. You know, we just keep people longer. We identify problems way faster because we're not trying to solve. We're not trying to get them like qualified leads and appointments in the same call. Right. We get them qualified leads. We give them a scorecard. And then on the next visit, which is a week later, like, 
All right. How'd you do? Hey, your response time was like an hour. You got like two appointments, but you got 50 leads. So what, what, what happens after that week, they've been getting the leads. It's been working the way you think it should work. What happens after that week? And they haven't gotten the, the results that you thought. They're all over you. And they, what do they say? They don't understand it. Um, they don't, they don't, they can't figure it out. Um, it's not quality leads. That's the big you, one. You, you're, you're not setting, we're not getting appointments. We can't get a hold of them immediately. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. And, and I mean, I went through this, um, and you know, I, it was hard for me because I spent 20 plus years in automotive. I know automotive. I was yeah. in the manufacturer side. I was in the dealer side. I was management to sales, to advertising, marketing. I wore every hat. When I came into the agency side and the vendor side of automotive, my biggest challenge was removing what I knew worked for me because I was 98% automated. I didn't make a single outbound phone call ever. Yeah. It was all automated but that doesn't work for everybody. And, and I ended up doing this slow, slow roll or slow onboarding. And I'll tell you, I had more retention. My support requests went down tremendously. Oh my gosh. Yes. It, it was, it was amazing. I, I couldn't believe it because what I was doing is I was giving everybody, look, this is what worked for me for years. I was 98% automated, you know, number one top gross earner year over year over year making easily six figures sitting on my hands here's my system take it run with it i get people oh, I, I don't under, i don't understand it yeah but like I, I see there's people in there and i know the system's doing something but i can't figure out what the heck it's doing because exactly. there was so much going on it was just overload but i'm a nerd I'm an analytical nerd. I love it. You yes. I, that's what I, I grew up around technology, but I started when there was Rolodexes on the wall instead of computers. And I had a tech background. That's what I went to college for. Yeah. So I had to really pare it down. And now, so like for my automotive sales reps, some of them are computer savvy. I mean, I deal with people from 20 year old, 20 year olds fresh in the business to 60 year olds that have been in the business for 15, 20, 30 years that may not be very tech savvy at all. Um, so what I learned to do was just put in a, you know, a system where it was just, it solved their initial problem. And then I'd follow back with them a week later. Hey, how's everything going? You got any questions? Okay. What do you feel like you could automate next? Well, I really want to, automate my follow-up on internet leads. Okay. So I just click a button, add in that automation. Here you go. I just add it one stage at a time as they felt the problems. Yeah. I didn't try to solve every potential problem all at once. And my, like I said, my support requests went way down, um, yeah. to virtually nothing. Um, they were more or less just coaching calls, best practice calls, um, actual complaint support. Like I can't figure this out. It's not working right or how I think it should work, those went out the window, um, which saved me thousands of dollars a month. So Yeah, yeah I, I want to jump in here real quick. Um, if we can just bounce back to the slow onboarding. Oh, yeah. Because um, I know that I, I think that that touches on, I mean, we've been in the agency space for a little while. I think that touches on a lot of the problems that we've had over the years, but especially as we're moving into SaaS and pitching up hex as part of that package. Um, it's, it's clients having poor expectations, even though obviously we try to set those expectations up front. So I think that that adopting that slow onboarding process, it sounds like Sam, you've done that and had really good success with it. And Charles too, if you, if you can, um, give your insights, I'd love to hear just a little bit more about what the process looks like. And cause just in my mind, I'm thinking of, like you said, having a goal for week one, week two, I don't know how many weeks you're doing onboarding for if it's like the, the whole first month but rather than them coming in expecting to jump in immediately okay we're getting leads we're getting appointments we're booking we're closing deals we're making money but having those expectations of okay these are the results we should expect in the beginning but it's going to take time to get to that 
that final end goal of consistent pipeline making money every month. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll jump into that. So I just noticed for a very long time, whether I was doing Upex or a service, it was the same. I just noticed for a very long time that we'd get like, like I'd hit this wall and the wall was like, oh, like the first wall is always your lead quality sucks. And it's like, well, how is the lead quality suck if that person and that person and that person it doesn't suck for them? I don't understand. Like, how is that? How is this possible? Right? So all of us, we do this thing where it's like, we focus on the symptom, right? But the, the symptom can't be solved. The source can be solved, right? So it's like symptom and source, symptom and source. <clears throat> the source of that problem is like a, a, a poor expectation or uh, like, it's like getting, it's basically like going from lead. You're doing the same thing that your customers are doing. You're saying leads are, are what you get. And I think I said, no, I said in my training this morning, when I first started the agency game, I thought my job was to get leads. Then I thought my job was to get quality leads. Then I learned that that's bullshit. And I thought my job was to get qualified leads. And that's what I still think today. Okay. Qualified leads. However, if I just stop there, they don't know what I know. And so I have to go and be like, well, what are the mo what are the, the checkpoints that all the people who have had success that they passed? Well, number one, is just qualified leads. And I always say with PacerStream, good news is when you onboard with PacerStream, because those campaigns are proven, because we've run them so much, you get a green light from the very first campaign, okay? The next one is appointments. Now appointments is like, a, like a, there's a lot of things that can be going wrong with appointments. Uh, I think Forrest actually could talk specifically more about appointments than I could, but if you're using tactics, first of all, it's, it's very rarely a tactical solution. Rarely. We all have the same tactics. We all have the same automation. We all have the same tools. What happens when those tools don't, you know, wave the magic wand? Well, then it's the soft skills that you have to evaluate, hence scorecard, and you have to address. And being able to address them is just having options. Like here's training, here's a third-party solution. All right. So we break it up our onboardings into checkpoints based on the hangups, like where they get, to, what's the next thing that's going to hang them up. That's a checkpoint. And we either ascend them to another layer of, to another uh, step of value, or we allow them to stay there. You can either hire it or acquire it. You can hire the next, like you can go to the next level of solution. You can pay for it with money or you can acquire it with your time with these training solutions. Because you only have time or money, right? That's all you can invest in it. And so checkpoint number one, are you getting bookings? Okay. And, and then we have a scorecard for that. It's like, okay, well, you're not responding to these people timely enough. I mean, every study that you look at, I think MIT did that one. Maybe Yale did one. I don't know. But if you're not going to get back to them within five minutes, it's actually like one, whatever, five minutes. Good luck. Right. So step number one, solve that tactical problem. Step number two, if you've ever listened to any of these calls, like the, the people who work for your businesses, they hate your business. They hate the business. They don't like working for whatever business. It, if it's automotive, they don't want to work for the car dealer. They hate their job. They're making an hourly wage. So that is public enemy number one. And it's like this enemy behind the gates. Like they don't know. Like the business owners like, Sally shows up every day. She does her job. She talks to people. People like Sally. Maybe when they're in there because Sally's a person and people like people in person. But anyway, so I do it. I do four right now. And I do it based on like one is the first onboarding. The goal is to get them qualified leads Two bookings, three conversions, four case values. Those are the, the four different ones. And I have a solution for, if, if you're not getting each one of those, I have a solution for every step. And they're, the first one is uh, one week out, then three weeks out. Uh, I forget, Heather has it like spaced out based on whatever, but yeah, that's what we do. Can you say the four steps again? Leads, bookings, then conversions. And then what was the last yeah, so one? Leads, booking, conversions, and then in, in my niche case value. Right. So like, for example, if, uh, 
if you if if you don't make enough money offering a service, like okay. If I have a hundred doctors and they're all offering the same thing and they make $5,000 on average per that thing. And then this guy or gal makes a thousand dollars on that thing. That's a problem. Cause no matter how marketing my not no how marketing, no matter how good my marketing is, it's just like going in one end and then coming out the other, right? They're not stacking profits on top, on top of investments. Right. So I have to, and, and if I, if, I used to think that that wasn't my problem. That's the, that's the thing what I, what I was saying. I used to think my job was leads and quality leads and qualified leads. If I don't address that problem, then they go away. So I have to find out what are your case values? How are you doing on this? And that particular problem, I, I have a, a, a third party that I'm like, hey, I'll do a three-way text between me, you, that person. And they have a solution. Right. And I negotiated a deal to where it's like, hey, don't take money from them unless you're uh, able to help them actually solve the problem. You know what I mean? I don't want to just throw on more expense um, because that's also not good. And so, anyway, so that's that's what that's all about. That's how I do it. So what we did. Awesome. Thank you. What we did is we took um, we do it over the course of eight weeks. Um, so when we do our initial sales call, um, we find out there are four biggest problems, um, which it's usually lead response time, um, yeah. you know, getting their own leads. Cause I'm working with mostly commission sales people within automotive. They're the people Sam was just talking about the people that hate their jobs. So they're trying to build their own business within a business so they can feel like their own boss show up with the desk and inventory to sell cars. That's it. They don't want to have anything to do with the dealer other than the desk and the inventory. And so for them, their biggest problems are usually, you know, getting, generating their own leads, staying in front of people over an extended period of time, because getting in front of people is not hard for them. It's staying in front of people over an extended period of time and then appointments. Um, and then, you know, magnifying that even more with lead acquisition. So what I did is I took my whole automation and broke it into four parts. And so during that call, I actually find out where their biggest problem is right now. And I start them off with that one solution. And then in my agency, I put the task for the other weeks. Okay. This is what we're going to roll out next. Cause this is going to be their next problem. We already solved their initial problem. This is going to be their next one. That'll be the one after that. And by week eight, they're on the fourth and final. They've got the full system, but it's rolled out so slowly that they feel the benefit of each part. And then when it all comes together, it's so much easier for them to see the full picture yeah. because they're not having to take it in all at once. And then usually, and the other reason we do it by eight weeks is we have a long-term nurture that we really preach to our users use this long-term nurture because your buying cycle right now in automotive is super long because of economy, inventory restrictions, all this stuff going on. So you're having to stay, grab people higher up in the funnel to keep your costs down, but then you also have to nurture them longer because of that. So take advantage of that. But at the eight week period, they've got a good grip on the system. So now they're talking about, Hey, can you run some Facebook ads for us to get us even more opportunities? We understand how the platform works. So while the Facebook ads are starting to ramp up eight to 10 weeks, they've already got deals coming out of the long-term follow-up from that 90 day follow-up. So it, it just, it's a slow progression, but then as they get into that eight to 10 weeks, they really start seeing it turning and they're like, wow, this is, you know, but during the initial sales, we say, you know, this is your problem right now. This is where we're going to take you, but we're going to address your main problem first and yeah. we'll lay out the roadmap, um, as you go along. All right, guys. So hopefully you're excited about the slow onboarding process that you have the ideas, the tactics that you need to start implementing that. So you can keep your customers longer. Now, if you're looking for a way to transition from a service-based agency into a SaaS, maybe you're already doing that. Maybe you have a SaaS agency. 
okay? One of the most potent offers and the po most potent features you can give to your customers right now is something called Upex. And Upex is automated Facebook ads. It's so easy, your clients can do it. Instead of offering ads as a service, you can add, uh, offer them as a software. It's a white label offer, so it's not like they see Upex, it's not like any of that. It looks like it is your software tool. It migrates, it integrates perfectly into your go high level SaaS platform. So if you wanna learn more about that, check it out at www.upex.com and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.